Victor! Professor Crump, I, you startled me. I'm sorry. That's all right. Is this where you've been this whole time? I've been working on something. When was the last time you had slept, Victor? Your eyes are rotten. Sleep is not of importance at this moment, Professor. What I am searching for is lying in this crevice that is so very close to cracking open, revealing its secrets coated in the sweetest honey. I smell it, and I will grab it. The secrets of life will be revealed. What have I told you about your claims? What have I said about the countless times you repeated your thesis? It's just not possible! Professor, I've taken more than a fascination for this. I've been researching into countless areas that may reveal the secrets. Cornelius Agrippa, Albertus Magnus... Really, Victor? Those are the people you're basing your research on? I'm sorry, but that is just simply absurd. You're practically reading fairy tales. You're wearing yourself down. Your peers are worried about you. Clairville's been asking for you for two weeks. If Clairville really needs me, he'll come down and appear before me himself. He's your best friend. I admire your ambition, Victor. I haven't seen a student show as much as you, but your mind needs a rest. If you try and look for what you are searching for in your state now, you won't go far. Professor... I know you are moments away from your so-called discovery, but you look close at a death right now. Please, get some rest. If you insist... Thank you. And after you rest, you should come back to the seminars. They've been missing you there. Tonight was the night. Tonight, Victor would be making history. As a bolt of lightning struck the rod, Victor went flying. <gasps> As he stood face to face with his creation, absolute terror took over Victor's being. The creature was alive. The creature, now alive, was desperate for answers. As he walked through his absent creator's laboratory, passing by jars of human body parts and past failed experiments, it was slowly becoming clear there had to be a connection. It wasn't until his gnarled eyes landed upon the images of Victor's family lined against the wall that he spotted for the first time in a small mirror something absolutely horrifying. His own reflection. The force of a volcanic eruption was all at once set off inside him, an incomprehensible feeling. Slightly brushing his hand across his battered face, the creature experienced a new discovery. He had started to cry. Overwhelmed by emotion and desire to understand more, the creature fled to the woods, absorbing the wondrous world around him. The crunching of the leaves, smoke assaulting his nostrils and vision, a beautiful butterfly floating by. Among these discoveries was a small cottage and adjacent hovel. Shivering as he stalked to the entrance, he shoved it open with his body weight. As he peeked inside, he spied upon the cottage's residence. A peasant family having a nice dinner and a kind-looking blind man strumming his guitar. Victor still lived lavishly, but in isolation. Guilt lingered on him from abandoning his passion project. He couldn't even sleep at night. All he could think about was the fear of this creature coming back for him.
Hello there, kind sir. Good morning. My name is... My name is... I... Who is there? Come in. Pardon this intrusion. I am a traveler in want of a little rest. You would greatly oblige me if you would allow me to remain a few minutes before the fire. Enter, and I will try, in what manner I can, to relieve your wants. But unfortunately, my children are from home, and as I am blind, I am afraid I shall find it difficult to procure food for you. Do not trouble yourself, my kind host. I have food. It is warmth and rest only that I need. From where did you come? Everywhere. And nowhere. Surely your hometown must miss you, being all alone in the woods. Your mother must worry so. I am an unfortunate and deserted creature. I have no relation or friend upon earth. The amiable people to whom I rely have never seen me and know little of me. Do not despair. To be friendless is indeed to be unfortunate. But the hearts of men, when unprejudiced by any obvious self-interest, are full of brotherly love and charity. Rely, therefore, on your hopes. Who are these friends you wish to know? It is you I wish to know! Your family! Who are you? Suddenly the children re-entered and were sent into a panic at the sight of the creature. So lost, distraught, he fled the scene. The happenings of this night would lead to the first of the creature's monstrous mistakes. Noticing his strange behavior, his wife-to-be Elizabeth decides to confront Victor, worried for his well-being. No sleep. Not as much as I would like. Another nightmare? Yes. A horrible one. Tell me. You... You were... Dying. I had you in my arms and you were dying. The most beautiful flower, wilting without probable cause, an omen of my future misery. And my mother... Her corpse disintegrated in front of my own eyes. There is some evil that wants to shatter me, so they attack my mind, my brilliant mind. An evil spirit? Of some sort. It's unexplainable. When you said you were scared of getting married, I didn't picture this. <laughs> Your nightmare will only be a moment from the past, my love. Let it wash away. We will be married soon, a new life for us will commence, and we will be reborn as one. We will have our own someday. Our days of waiting will be over soon. Our patience will pay off, and we will live out in the country in a little house like the one my father had, next to the towering trees, surrounded by the disguised birds singing their love for the sky. And in the nights, we will bathe in the moon's rays, her light showering us with her blessing. Aren't my rays enough, darling? Brighter than the sun's. William? Yes, Miss Justine? It's time to come inside now, little one. Bring your toys back in. I'll have your bath ready. Yes, Mom! Young William. Who's that? Over here. In the shrubbery closest to you, young one. How do you know my name? That matters not. I am in need of help. What kind of help, sir? I seem to be lost. What are you doing in the shrubbery? Oh, dear. My apologies. I have a very horrible illness that contorts and melts my skin and bones. I don't want to frighten you, so I must stay hidden. It's very quaint, as you might want to have a glimpse, but I'm afraid not. My sickness is... Utterly repulsive. I'm not afraid. I've seen sickness before. My mother had it. She's gone now. My apologies, young one. 
You are a gallant little boy for finding it necessary to carry on without the one who put you into this world. What about your mother? <sighs> I'm not sure if I even remember my mother. I remember my father, however. I remember him leaving me out to fend for myself in a heartless world with nothing but my apparel, making me loathe the life I had been gifted, a beautiful gift that needs assistance to make it last longer. The Earth is now my mother. She feeds me, nurses me, and doesn't attempt to ponder on my appearance. You talk like my brother. Brother? I never know what he's up to anymore because I never see him. He's always down in his laboratory working, but he's getting married soon. Everyone deserves to get married, especially Victor. William Frankenstein! Yes? I do take it you are surprised, but it is not the surprise you were looking forward to. I thought about you all this time, from the dawn of my creation to this confrontational gathering you stayed running circles inside the mind you gifted me, driving my ambition and search for survival, and my search for purpose. Devil! Do you dare approach me? Your purpose will be feeling my vengeful arm wrecking the top of your head! An expected response. Weak men hate the wretched. Why bother gifting me with life if you were only waiting to squish it like an unwanted bug? You are the insect vile monster! Do halt your hatred, please. If you allow me to speak, I'm sure we can atone for something of common interest. I will not bargain with a hellspawn! Even one which I created with my own hands still burnt from the spark which I bestowed upon you. After all that has come before, you still seek to drive my life into misery. My gift, my existence, has been nothing but anguish. Yet. I will stake it, because it is dear to me. Much like you, I find the unartificial beauty of this scenery quite mesmerizing. Hast thou forgotten so soon what thy creation embodies? I tower over you as the mountains tower above all, and my muscles exploit suppleness. My appearance implores me to stomp you into dust according to your mind, but I shall resort to more useful ways of communication if you are willing to do your due diligence and good as well. You know nothing of good! I was good. Misery made me this way. Misery from you, Frankenstein! I ought to be thy Adam, but I am rather the fallen angel whom thou drivest from joy for no misdeed. Now, thou misdeed shall be sparred with equal force and additional suffering. <sighs> Terrible news about William I have heard. Shame he had to leave the nest so soon. He possessed more bravery and courage through a swollen throat than your person has ever shown. The hands you have created have sucked the breath out of your own flesh and blood. I too can create despair. I too can create desolation. And a thousand other miseries shall torment and destroy you. Such will be the case with the Lady Justine, who is going to be hanged for murder at this very moment.
You fiend! You waste of passion, you! The fiery pits of hell are merely mild for what you deserve! I deserved acceptance, Victor. And that moment has blown away with the sands of time. I know now that your kind cannot accept me. For they are worms, slithering through the earth, feeling justification and mockery and hatred. Not everything is without acknowledgement, though. Beneath their pathetic lives, they are able to find some enjoyance through the company of another being. A bond of some sort. If none of your kind can accept me, then I wish to be accepted by one of my own. Make me a mate, and we will be bound for eternity. We will walk the lands together as one, without the judgment of your kind. Create once more. Build another. Gift me a mate, and no despair shall be bestowed upon your person or family. If you even believe that I will create another hideous beast! There will be tidal waves of blood if you refuse! William's death was quick and swift, but I will make other sufferings long and painful. I will grab your head and submerge it into the bloodbath of your family tree. I will take Elizabeth and crush your meek bones before I twist your neck and make it swivel smoothly to turn like a red wheel. So I do suggest you make the right decision. I will! I will! Oh God, please! I will make it! Just just don't kill me! Don't kill me! Then I would suggest, if you will grant me permission, to commence the creation. I heard from your professor earlier today. He said after he found you in the lab there, you never came back. You weren't at the lectures or the seminars. Everyone there misses you and they're worried to death. I don't like when you ignore me, Victor. Pardon? No, I, I, I'm all right, dear. No need to worry about anything. How can you expect me to believe that when you are behaving like this? Elizabeth, I promise you, if there was something dramatic or foul happening, I would tell you. Are you sick? No. Are you tired? Not quite. Something is wrong, Victor, and you're not telling me. I'm working on a new project. You might notice that I'm a little pressurized. I do. But it is nothing to worry about, love. It's just complications and oversights, scientific things you wouldn't understand. Pardon? I must leave tomorrow to complete the work. Leave? To where? Out of this providence. I can't... I can't stay here if I am to complete my work. I must go, but I promise from the bottom of my grieving heart I will return when I finish. The project will come together quicker if I'm not here, you must understand. I'm trying to understand. Why would you need to leave for a simple project? Elizabeth, trust me. Bundle your trust in the thickest blanket of love and hand it to me. I will return it to you when this is over because I love you. I will return and we will become married and we will live. We will live, Elizabeth.
That night, Victor worked tirelessly on the monster's bride. He was sure this would save Elizabeth and nothing could change his mind. A few days into his work, Victor heard a long knock at the door. Drunk on passion and sleep deprivation, he ignores the knock, but hearing that familiar voice on the other side of the door. Victor! Late that night, Victor decided to dispose of the half-finished body, promising to never tell Elizabeth what he's made. As he paddled back to shore from the large lake, Victor gets a sudden feeling that he isn't truly alone. Seeing nothing, Victor brushes the feeling off and finished his trek back to shore, returning to Elizabeth. I take you, my dear Mary, to have and to hold. I will strive every day to protect you when you feel sorrow creep in, to protect you from whatever dark shall come our way, and to love you until the end of time. Do you take this wonderful man, friend, and father, Percy Shelley, to be your lawfully wedded husband, for richer or for poorer? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. There, Victor found the most horrifying of sights. 
His Elizabeth, dead. Taking only a moment to mourn, Victor realized the monster could be back any minute. With a heavy heart, he did the only thing he knew to do. Victor ran. He ran through the icy tundra, the creature close on his heels. He ran and ran and ran for about a week straight. But all journeys must come to an end. Victor, exhausted, buckles under his own weight and collapses. Finally, after all this time, the creature finds his creator through the Arctic fog. But this is wrong. Once ready for a fight, the creature realizes it's too late. Now at this sorrowful reunion, cradling his father in his arms, the monster weeps.